How's it going everyone? Today you are going to learn how to create wireframe and clay renders in under 9 minutes. If you end up liking this video be sure to like and subscribe for more and now let's begin with the tutorial. The first thing I'm going to show you how to make is the wireframe render. So just quickly before I get started I'm going to delete the default cube and add a icosphere just because it has a lot more edges for us to actually see the effect on. So now what you want to do is go over to the render panel and enable freestyle. So as of now and probably forever, freestyle is the best way to achieve this effect. So you can open this little panel here and you can see you have two options, absolute and relative. I recommend you just uh, leave it on absolute and you can change the line thickness here. I recommend you just leave that on one, but feel free to change that if you like. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is go over to the View Layer Properties panel and come down to Freestyle, you'll see here. You won't be able to see this if you didn't uh, enable it. So you can see we have a line set here, so you can add multiple line sets and enable and disable them. But for now, I'm just going to stay with one. Alright, so we, if you come down here, you'll see we have a bunch of options, so most of these you can just uh, leave as is, but what we want to do is disable these three here and enable edge mark. So what this allows us to do is choose specific edges that we want uh, the line set to apply to. So go into edit mode on your object, oops, there we go. And I'm going to hit A because I want it to be on all the edges. And now what you want to do is hit Control E to bring up this little panel. And you want to come and click Mark Freestyle Edge. So as you can see, they've all turned green, uh, showing that they are marked. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to change the color of it. So... If you come down and open this little panel here, you'll see we have a bunch of options. So strokes, normally you shouldn't have to touch this, so I'm just going to go over to color. So you'll see we have a base color option here, so I'm just going to leave that as black. But I'm actually going to show you how to make a gradient. So the first thing you want to do is hit add modifier, and you want to add a distance from object modifier. So if you scroll down, you'll see we have a bunch of options here. So the first thing we actually have to do is add an empty, which will mark the start of the gradient. So hit Shift A, and go and add an empty, and plane axis will do. And now you want to pull this out to where the gradient will start. So I'll just put it about there. So now you can come down here and um, use the target and put that on the empty. Alright, so now what you want to do is click your object and hit fill range by selection. So what this does is it gets the range for the gradient and it automatically does it so you don't have to uh, do it yourself. Alright, so now if I go and render this out, I'm going to use uh, my free add-on here. So you'll see uh, there it is. But we only have a very little bit of black, so what I'm going to do is push this black right up here and re-render. And you'll see now we have a lot more of it is black. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is uh, change the opacity of this. So what you can do is go to Alpha. And now just like before, we're going to hit Add Modifier and Distance from Object. So now if you scroll down, we can select that same empty we had before. And same deal, we just select the object and hit fill range by selection. And there we go. So you can play around with the influence or you can change it to curve. Linear is normally just fine. And you'll see now if I render it out, uh, we are missing the opacity there. Alright, so we have a few more options left. So the next one is thickness. So with this one, as the name implies, you can change the thickness of the line. So for example, if I crank up there and hit render. 
see the line is much thicker but I prefer it a bit thinner so I'm just going to leave it on free. The next option is for geometry so we you can see we have a sampling option by default here so the smaller this value the more precise the strokes will be um, but I find normally just on 10 is uh, perfectly fine and you also had the option to add a texture if you wish so you can click this button and add a texture alright so now I'm going to show you how to do the clay render alright so I just opened up an old scene of mine so we can actually see the clay render in action so the first step is actually creating a clay shader so you have two options so you can either just create a very basic one which is basically just a principled BSDF node and you can increase the roughness and that's all you have to do so for example if I was to just plug it in it's just very simple uh, it just looks like that but if you actually want a realistic clay shader what you can do is find some sort of fingerprint uh, image uh, I got this one off polygon.com for free there will be a link in the description so basically that is fed into a color ramp to control the roughness and it's also fed into a bump and then to the normal so you can create those bumps and there's also the, a displacement modifier on there uh, which has a texture on it for clouds and uh, if you enable Node Wrangler, which is a free add-on, you just go and search it in your preferences and enable it. You can select your image and hit Control T, and it will bring up a mapping and texture coordinate node. For example, you can then add a value node to control the scale of it. And I will just plug this in so you can see it in action. There we go. So if I sort of move around, you can see the fingerprint texture on it there. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to actually set up the clay render. So in Cycles, what you can do is go over to this tab here. And then you can, oh sorry, this tab. And under Override, you can go and select your clay material. So I'm going to go and select it there. And now you see if I was to render it out, everything will be the material you chose. And the great thing about this is at any time you can change this material or you can delete it and it will go back to normal. This setting is not present in Eevee however, so what you have to do in set is duplicate your scene file. So I'm going to use power save to do this and power save it. So basically that just duplicated my scene. And now what you want to do is select everything uh, with A and now hold shift and click the object that has the clay material on it so that way it will be, oops, so you want it to be the uh, most recent selected one. So now you can go over to the texture panel and come up to this little drop down arrow and hit copy material to select it and you should see that every uh, material now switches to the clay but be aware that this is a bit hard to undo uh, after you've done some rendering and things as you can see it's all on clay uh, which is why it's very important to duplicate your scene alright thanks for watching everyone if you enjoyed this and you want to up your blender game consider liking the video subscribing and drop a comment below for more and I'll see you in the next video Bye. Bye.